Hello Scratchers, welcome to another Scratch Genius tutorial. In this series I will be showing you how to make the hit mobile game Subway Surfers in Scratch. It is an infinite runner game where you have to avoid obstacles with parkour in order to get the highest score. I have made this Scratch version as simple as possible while still being similar to the real game. I will rate the difficulty level of this project to be beginner to intermediate so-so and it is about as complex as my Geometry Dash tutorial if you have seen that already. And as I mentioned earlier, I plan on making this a series, so make sure that you subscribe so that way you don't miss the next episodes. Now without further explaining, let's start programming. So here we are in a brand new Scratch project and ready to get started. The first thing we are going to be doing is drawing the lines for our three subway lanes that our player can move into and that obstacles can come down from. So for that I'm going to be selecting the stage and go to paint a new backdrop. It is going to consist of four lines, so I'm going to start off by drawing two lines on the left side, or it can also be on the right side, it does not really matter right now, but only two, and make sure to give them an angle. So now after drawing them I can select the reshape tool and select them and drag the ends to uh, really fine tune their, their look and position. Oops. Do not, if you accidentally click on there, you can just click on uh, delete and delete that point. I'm going to select the end point and make the middle one less slanted than the one on the side. And this is to give that sort of 3D perspective uh, kind of look that Subway Surfer has. So I, right now I think this looks kind of good. Uh, actually, maybe a bit wider, so I'm going to be select this and move it off to the right a bit and maybe even more slanted on the side. There, perfect. Now to make the other side, we still need two more lines and to do that, I will be selecting both of these and dragging them into the center. And now it's very important that we count how far off to the left we move it. So I'm gonna be holding shift and then using the arrow keys to move them a very a constant distance off to the left. So I'm going to start counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I think 8 is, that seems good. And now to make the other side very symmetrical, I'm going to be selecting these, and then copying them, Control c or you can use the copy button, and then pasting them. So now we have an uh, exact copy, drag that to the center, and now flip them horizontally. Now that they are flipped horizontal, we can once again use the uh, shift and the arrow keys put this time to the right and make sure to move it the same amount that we moved the other pair to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that we have two, or sorry, three symmetrical lanes, we can find make the final adjustments because as you can see, these distances of the two side lanes at the top are smaller than the one in the middle and same with the ones at the bottom, which means that we have to do a bit more adjusting. So I'm going to move the middle one a bit more off to the right and then also with this pin I'm going to move it off to the left a bit and I'm going to delete this side copy the side again and then do the same thing again flip it horizontally off to the right one two three four five six seven eight and now look how that looks you can even uh, draw a small line here if you want for measurement and then use it to check if all of the distances are correct and in this case, they all seem pretty equal to me. Same thing with the bottom. Actually, never mind. We need to adjust the bottom a bit. Okay, well, now it looks perfect. So that, now that we are done, we can get on and start working on the player character. So I'm going to select the cut sprite and rename it to player. Now we're going to go to costumes and start drawing the player's costumes. So I'm going to make a new sprite, a new costume, sorry, and delete the cut since we do not need the cut anymore. And now we can start drawing our character. And now you can use anything you want. You can try to use a Subway Surfer model or you can draw your own character. However, I chose to go with a simple rectangle since it's a lot easier to draw and it's very hard to make a good looking uh, animated 3D character. Or at least for me, I am not an artist. but. Uh, you guys could definitely try that if you want and I'd love to see the results. So to get started with this I am going to be using once again or I'm going to be using the rectangle tool 
and I'm going to draw a small rectangle on here and move it onto the center. So we want to make sure that the player is kind of small, definitely not as tall as the train since the trains are uh, very big in real life. And then I'm also going to be reducing the outline a bit to be less thick when you use about 10. And of course also provide a filling of color. So I'm going to choose a nice blue shade of color. And now we have to draw three different costumes to help give that 3D effect. One for the middle, one for the left, and one for the right. So for the middle, I'm going to be copy pasting this uh, to have two rectangles and move the second rectangle up a bit and to the back. So now it kind of looks like a rectangle that you're looking up from above. Now we have to make the one on the left. So I'm going to duplicate it to make sure that we are still have the same size rectangles as before. But this time I'm going to grab the back rectangle and move it off to the right a bit. Now we can also drag this costume off to the left to that way we can see what it will look like once we are playing the game. So I think something like that will look good. Now we have to make it look 3D though. So to do that, I will be selecting the rectangle and once again using the reshaping tool. I will be creating an extra control point by clicking on the edge and now we can change the shape of this object. I wanted to switch it to pointed since we have a, a sharp object and moving that point to the very corner so it looks like it connects as if it was a 3D shape. And you can also use the arrow keys once again to fine tune the position to make it look just right. Once again, with this bottom corner, I'm going to make another control point, point it and move it down to the bottom. There, that looks good. And we only need one more for this final edge, which I'm going to just use a regular line for. Perfect. And for the right side, it is really easy since we only have to duplicate this object, select it, and then flip horizontally. Now we have to recenter all of these costumes. Perfect. Then we can get started on the player's movement code. I'm going to start off with a green, when green flag clicked and a forever block. Now we're going to have to have a variable to keep track of what lane the player is currently in. So for that, off to variables and make a new variable called player lane. Make sure it is also for all sprites. And we can hide it and also delete the default my variable. Once we have this created, we can grab the set block and set the player lane to zero at the beginning. Now we're going to have to take key input and change the player's lane based on that. So we grab an if block and then an and operator, since we're going to have to check for two things. First of all, of course, we want to know whether the player is pressing a key on the keyboard. So I'm going to start off with the left arrow. But now we also want to make sure that the player is not already in the left lane, since we do not want the player to go off and beyond the left lane. So for this, we're going to use a comparison operator and check if the player lane is greater than minus one. The lanes are going to be called minus one, zero, and one for very useful reasons that you will see later on. Now, all we have to do is make it so that we change the player lane by minus one, which is off to the left. Now we can duplicate this and set it for the right. Now, we're this time we want to check if the player lane is less than one and increase the player lane by one. However, if we click play now and we press the keys, you will see the player does not move. And this is of course, because we are not actually setting the X variable. So we have to do that with another one green flag click block. And you will see the purpose of this later on. Another forever loop and a set X block. Now we're going to be multiplying the player lane by a certain value. If we move the player off to the left, we want to drag it right in the middle of the lane and then check the X value that we have it currently set at, which is minus 104. So I'm going to multiply it by 104. And this is where the usefulness of calling the lanes minus 1, 0 and 1 come in. 
This is because if the lane is minus 1 and we multiply it by 104, we will go to minus 104. And if the lane is 1, which is the right lane, it will go to positive 104, roughly. And to positive 104. And if it is 0, it is simply going to multiply to 0 and go to the center. Much easier than having to have multiple if blocks. Now we press play. You will see that when we press the left and right arrows, the player moves to the left and right. However, we still have a problem here. You will see that the player zips right off to the very left or to the very right lane without even stopping in the middle. I did not press the key multiple times though. This is a bug. To fix it, we're going to have to make sure that we wait until we release the buttons before we uh, move again. So I'm going to use a wait until block and now two operators, not and or. We want to be checking and waiting. We want to be waiting until we are not pressing the left or the right arrows. So now when we give an input such as left or right, it will wait until we stop pressing the key, until we let go of it, and then we can press it again to move right or left once again, which will stop us from moving too far off to one side. But you may notice that something is still missing. Actually, two things. First of all, we need to switch the costumes to the left or the right costume when we go to the left or the right lane. And second of all, we still need to be able to jump. I'm going to start off with the costumes. You have to go over to looks and drag in a switch costume too. However, we're going to be doing this a bit differently. Instead of using if blocks, we're simply going to use a join operator and the player lane variable. We're going to be joining costume and player lane together. The way that this is going to work is that we're going to name the costumes after their player lanes, such as costume 0 for the lane 0, which is the middle, costume minus 1, which is left lane, since this is the costume for the left lane, and finally the same thing for the right lane as costume 1. So now we don't even have to have any if blocks at all, we just used one block to switch the costumes. And this is because we take the player lane, which can be minus 1, 0 or 1, and join that together with the word costume to switch the costumes. And the reason why we still leave the word costume in here and not just use the player lane is because if we use just a number, the switch costume to block will be thinking that we are trying to switch it to a costume ID, not a costume name. And that kind of breaks the way it works. So to keep this working, we have to have some text in there so that it knows that we are giving it a name of a costume, not an ID of a costume. So if we hit play, we will now see that when we go to the left and right lanes, we will have the respective left and right costumes. Very well. Now to move on to the jumping, we are going to want another input. Checking if we have the up arrow pressed. So, with this if block, we are going to want to set the velocity of the player to an upwards velocity so that the player is moving up into the air and then we're going to have another block which constantly decreases our velocity as gravity. In this case, we're going to need more variables. Of two variables, we're going to create a y velocity variable. And this one we can keep also for all sprites. Now we're going to be setting this y velocity to a certain number. In this case, I'm going to do 40. And we can drag this into our forever loop. And the reason why I'm not putting it into here is this because if we were to put the jumping into this loop, we won't be able to jump and switch lanes midair, which in the real subway surface, you can jump and then move off to the left and right while you are still in the air. Now that the setting y velocity doesn't do anything, so we are going to have to actually modify our y position. We're going to be changing y by y velocity and then also changing the y velocity by a certain constant. In this case, I'm going to do minus 6 because I think that that is a good uh, level of gravity. But you can notice a problem pretty clearly and pretty soon is that we do not have a floor. The player just keeps on falling forever and we can also keep on jumping in midair. To stop jumping in midair, we're going to have to check if the player is on the ground. 
if, if the player is at a certain y level. I want to use the y position block and check if it is equal to minus 100, as I'm going to be setting minus 100 as the floor level. Drag that into the, the if operator. And now for making it so the player actually stays at that floor level, we're going to have to have another if block. And check if the y position is less than 100. Let's duplicate the y position reporter and check once again if it's less than 100. Now we can set the y velocity in here to zero because it is on the ground and we're not moving anymore. And then also set the y position to the minus 100 that our floor is at. Now we are going to drag this under the change y and change y velocity blocks in the forever loop. And now if we click play, we will see that our player stays at minus 100. We can move still to the left and to the right. And we can now jump with gravity. And once we hit the floor, our player will stay at the floor. Very nice. Well lads, this is starting to shape up into a very exciting game now that we have player movement. In the next tutorial, we will be adding barriers that will be coming down on the lanes and we will have to jump over to avoid and not lose. And then in the following tutorials, we will also be adding the trains and a scoring system. Maybe I might even make even more videos adding coins and ramps to jump onto the trains and many other features that Subway Surfers has, but I have not shown yet in the beginning of the video. Make sure to subscribe so that way you do not miss the next tutorials. And if you want, you can also join my Discord server, which is a place for scratchers to hang out ask for help and show the amazing stuff that they have created. Of course, I will always be available for questions either in the comments down below or also on Discord. And I will be very excited to see you guys soon in another video. Bye bye.